Hey guys, Sean here. Welcome to the F1 Word and to a roundup of today's launches as well as Alpha Tauri's launch at the weekend and a look at the FW45 proper. It's been a busy day and it's going to be a busy week, so let's jump straight into it. First up today, McLaren gave us our first look at the MCL 60. The launch also included a piece looking back at the team's 60 year history, which was really well done to be fair. I do love my F1 history, but anyway, it's a bit of a mixed bag here because the car shown at launch was apparently the real one, but the renders are apparently this year's livery on last year's car, or at least not the full version of the MCL 60, which is interesting, but just bear that in mind when you're looking at the images in the video. Once again, the word evolution has been used around the aerodynamics of the car design, but it does feature some interesting changes, including those Red Bull inspired side pods, which they did run last year, by the way, but they've been updated for 2023. Some have also noted the larger undercut to the side pods and the whole area appears much tighter than the spec they ran last year. There are also changes to the car's floor fences. New team boss Andrea Stella was asked about targets for the season and he said the team is staying realistic but also optimistic for the season ahead. I think all eyes are on that new wind tunnel opening later this year, aren't they, and how that will affect 2024. Zach Brown, back to this year, believes they have identified the shortcomings of last year and worked hard to tackle it on this season's car, adding, quote, I think we got most of it right, but we know there's still a couple of areas that we're not where we want to be. Sort of on topic, but just wandering off a little bit and back on that wind tunnel thing. It does feel to me like 2023 is going to be a bit of a transitional year for McLaren. We'll see, of course. They might smash it and surprise us all. As for the livery, it looks very similar to last year and there is a lot of exposed carbon fibre. Something we've already seen from some teams so far this launch season, most notably Haas and Alfa Romeo, of course. Now, I wasn't a big fan of last year's paint job. I just thought it all looked a little bit messy. And although this is very similar, it is definitely an improvement in my view. Although in McLaren's defense, that was born more out of necessity rather than design as they kept stripping the paint off last season. And this is all clearly, as we've seen from the liveries they run in other series, the McLaren brand now, so no huge surprises with the launch. I think all in all, it's a good looking car and it's nice to see that evolution there and the liveries and improvement on last season. I think what I really want to see though from McLaren, even if this year does turn out to be a bit transitional, is a decent step forward because I want to see McLaren back fighting at the front. It might be a few years away, but hopefully this is the first step in that comeback. Although I feel like I've been saying that for a while now with McLaren. Also, just a quick reminder, these are just newsy reaction style videos. They are not deep dives into all the technical changes, etc. for reasons that are quite simple. One, I'm not great with the technical side and quickly make myself look like a complete fool. And more importantly, two, because I don't really see the point in going over all these cars with a fine tooth code because even the real cars we see at launch will be tweaked ahead of testing and that first race. Yes, I know many of you know this already, but it's just a quick heads up for anyone who's new to the channel. Moving on though, and a couple of hours later, Aston Martin pulled the covers off the new AMR23 at the team's brand new factory, which will be operational in a few months. And this is the real car, a proper real car, although still expect some change before the season starts. And there are a few things to pick out about the design. From the side view, the bodywork around the exhaust looks quite chunky compared to last year. The nose cone appears more rounded than last season, and that's only to my untrained eye, of course, but I've noticed that on a few other cars this year. So maybe teams taking some inspiration from Ferrari for the nose and maybe Red Bull for the side pods. They clearly work, but anyway, it's also clear that the front wing is very, very different as well. The biggest thing to jump out to me, though, is the sculpting of those side pods, specifically from the top down. They're more like indentations and sculpting. That's a really interesting take on that one. Now, technical director Dan Fallows did give us a bit more insight than my look at those indentations line. He says around 95% of the car is new, which is very impressive. And the design team wanted to take on the new regulations without any compromise at all as the team tries to make its way up the grid. He added that the AMR23 is a significant development of the car they refined in the back half of 2022, improved in every critical area. And I've got to say, it looks fantastic and is probably my favourite so far, mostly because not only does it look great, but it is also an actual Formula One car that we're going to see on track this season. That always helps. Dan Fallows actually said that he thinks come the end of the year, two thirds of the car will be different to the one we saw today. So that's something we can compare in November. Looking at the livery, well, it's the same as last year's really, isn't it? So not much to add. It's a bit like I said about Red Bull, though. It's the Aston brand, and if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So not a massive shock to see the green sticking around. The only thing I will add is that it's not a look that always stands out on track, if you know what I mean. It doesn't 
pop in the same way it seems to at launch or in the launch material. Maybe it's just me, but let me know. A quick word from Fernando Alonso as he prepares for his first season with the team. At the launch and in the press release, he reiterates that it was the ambition and determination he saw at Aston that drew him to the team. And he describes a new car as, quote, incredibly neatly packaged and highly efficient and expects to unlock plenty of performance in the car this year. Interestingly enough, he also said that he was expecting some difficult races at the start of the year as the team tries to work out how the car operates and what the setup window is for it. And although he does come into 2023 with his feet firmly on the ground, Alonso feels there is a possibility he will be able to fight for wins and another title in the future with Aston Martin. But do not worry, he is not getting ahead of himself just yet and isn't expecting that this season. It is quite interesting that he said that because he's not the youngest driver out there and so he must be expecting the team to be fighting for something in the near future in the next couple of years unless of course he's going to race till he's about 75 which would not surprise me at all and i wouldn't be totally against the idea either why not all in all you know it's a good looking car and it's good to see a team not only evolve a few bits but really go aggressive with a new design sure the livery is very much the same but some of the stuff going on with the packaging and again the design is really exciting even for me Lawrence Stroll wants to win titles and they are a way off that yet. But as I've said many times on this channel, they are getting everything in place and the future looks very bright at Aston Martin. On Saturday night, Alpha Tower revealed their new livery in New York in the AT04 in some renders released online. The livery features new red accents showing off new sponsor PKN Orlin, who of course moved over from Alpha and Mayo. And I have to say this pretty much straight away on this one, I am really not a fan of the livery. If you love it, that's great, but I really don't like it. Maybe it's one of those that will look better once it's out on track, but the red is not working for me. However, it is still good to see new sponsors on cars and that along with how it performs on track is far more important than how i think it looks so let's leave it there as for the car design itself technical director jody eggington said the team had put more focus on trying to improve downforce levels by introducing aggressive packaging and improvements around the aero and went on to add and i will quote him here that almost all areas of the car represent a strong evolution from the ato3 and great attention was paid to packaging so that we would have the best basis for aerodynamic development he also explained that despite teams losing aero performance thanks to the regulation tweaks for 2023, he fully expects that loss to be recovered in the aero development process. So perhaps these changes won't have the impact that some are expecting. We shall see, of course, and not long to wait now. Oh, it's all getting very exciting. There was an interesting line from Franz Toss at the launch, by the way, and I really want to mention this. He was essentially asked if the field will be closer this year than it was in 2022, and he said that he expects it to be much more evenly matched and that he doesn't expect that, quote, one driver will have such a big advantage this year and win so early and believes the fight will go down to the wire. Not really relevant to the ATO4 itself, I know, but I thought that was an interesting, let's say, prediction that I really hope comes true. And finally, relatively quickly, we had another launch this morning as Williams showed off the actual FW45 ahead of its shakedown at Silverstone. The car features a redeveloped side pod package, which even I can see is more focused on downwash than last year's car was, as well as a new nose and front wing assembly to name just a couple of things. Alex Albon took the car out for a run first with Logan Sargent getting the chance later in the day. Albon described the car as a good baseline and well balanced, adding that the team has addressed some of the issues with last year's car and believes they are moving in the right direction. And I'll say it before somebody else does. Obviously, that is only based on a shakedown and we'll see how that translates when we get to Bahrain. On the livery side, though, I have to admit that car does look so much better out on track, which to be fair does tend to be the case. Nothing beats seeing a car on a racetrack rather than some renders or whatever. On that note, actually, an Alpine has been seen running at Silverstone today. Now, I'm not sure if it's this year's car or what they're doing, maybe a filming day or shakedown. We'll see what Alpine have got in store for us at their launch proper on Thursday. But one thing is for sure, things are really ramping up now and new season hype is definitely building. Bring it on. Oh, I cannot wait for this season. That is it for this one. But let me know down in the comments section what you think of the launches we've seen so far. And do you know what? Yeah, which car so far is your favourite?
Now, Ferrari will be launching their 2023 Challenger tomorrow at 10.25 a.m. GMT. So I will be back around lunchtime tomorrow with some initial reaction to that. In the meantime, though, if you did enjoy this one, then please do leave a like because it really does help the channel out. And don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on any future videos or streams. But as ever, thank you for watching. I've been Sean. This has been the F1 Word. And until next time, goodbye.